Fortunes are won and lost in Las Vegas all the time, but the city itself has been on the losing end of the foreclosure crisis, and that has led to a 17 percent rise in homelessness. Nearly 2,000 more people are competing for fewer than 1,000 beds in the city's homeless shelters. So the question is, where else can they go? Seth Doan found out. Las Vegas, it was built on the dream of striking it rich. But beneath these bright lights is a much darker world for those who've struck out. When we come down here a lot of times, we don't know what to expect. Tagging along on a homeless outreach mission. Sometimes people don't know how to ask for help. We journey deep into a labyrinth of flood tunnels, snaking for more than 200 miles, up to 20 feet below the ritzy casinos. Here hundreds, maybe even a thousand homeless, escape the desert heat and the pressures of the world above. Mike, who's hooked on meth, says tunnel life was an adventure at first. Now, eight years later, what are you thinking? I'm thinking, what a big mistake I made. The walls serve as a roster of those who've made mistakes, like Barry, who spent 17 years in prison. Got my little library here. It's not much. You call this your library? Yeah, two Why? books. Amid the scraps and misfortune, lives are pieced together. Sally and her partner Diego fled to these tunnels just six weeks ago. This yeah. is your ID from? Yeah. Sally shows me her casino ID. All that's left from her 21 years as a cashier at the Frontier Hotel before it closed three years ago. I never, never dreamed to be here. Look at where I'm at. You have tears on your well, face. Well, because I got a lot of pain, you know. A lot of pain. For a while, they laid tiles in homes until the construction boom went bust. The recession really hit you. Yeah, hit yeah. me in my head so bad. Now they've laid a line of moss to keep water off their bed. And Diego catches the runoff for a shower. You came from Cuba here in search of the American dream. This doesn't look like the American dream. Millions of people lose American dreams already. It's not only me. Some of them did make poor choices, but that doesn't mean you should give up on them. Journalist Matt O'Brien wrote a book about this elaborate subterranean world of beds with headboards, makeshift pantries, even art on the walls. But this is no place to live. Down here, you have some privacy. You know, you can kind of live on your own. And look, you have a ceiling, two walls, and a floor. O'Brien's interest has turned into advocacy. You mind if we come in and speak with you? And he's connected folks in the tunnels with a local nonprofit group called Help of Southern Nevada. We could be that light, the end of the tunnel. We could be that that prayer that's answered. Getting back to normality. It was for Randy, who now has an apartment thanks to HELP, which has placed more than 70 people in transitional housing, giving hope to the hundreds still living in the shadows beneath the neon. Seth Doan, CBS News, Las Vegas.